Yes, absolutely, absolutely. So to to sum it up in a, in very one sentence, the whole purpose of of staking is to actually earn a yield, a passive yield, while holding your uh, digital assets. So you can look at it from from two ways. I would say, from a blockchain perspective, staking is actually a consensus mechanisms to ensure that all your transactions on a on a, a proof of stake blockchains. Which are, which are different from, for instance, a proof of works one, are actually verified and secured. So you can look at it from, a, from this perspective, like a way to, to validate all transactions. But from a financial perspective, it's actually also a way to incentivize delegators to provide their assets, to stake them, to hold them, to allocate them to some validators. So the combination of both is really about generating a passive income while you are holding your cryptocurrencies. Oh, that's, that's fantastic. Yeah. Could, is there an analogy in tr the traditional financial landscape? I would say that you, you can look at it, uh, for instance, uh, as a comparison to dividends or also to interest that you earn when you are lending your money or, or other assets. But at the same time, I would say it's also quite unique in the way it's secured. And it's a way, and I believe it's also a beautiful illustration about how the Web3 and, and the DeFi can actually improve, uh, improve the traditional finance mechanisms. In this instance, Maybe what we can we can first look at is how big staking is compared to the total crypto market, and then if you allow me, I will walk you through how to actually generate income. Sounds so good. staking, if you compare it to to the total crypto market cap, is roughly six hundred billions of of uh, market cap just of uh, proof of stake uh, proof of stake crypto currencies. Of course, uh, in the non-proof-of-stake blockchains, you have uh, you have Bitcoin as well as uh, other proof-of-works one. But here, the purpose is really to focus on this 26% of the market and how much money they can generate as a passive income. So uh, to give you an example, as of now, you have about 200 billions of assets, which is absolutely huge, and it represents 10% of the total crypto market cap. It's an industry that generates about... 9 to 10 billion of, of rewards each and every year. And for to give you a bit of a perspective in terms of rates, in terms of yields, how much does it yield? If you weigh that by market cap, you would say that in average, you are around 5% a year of yield. However, because all the different blockchains have their own yields, which is something we will dive in a little bit after, you also have quite uh, a variance between these different yields. And, and you can have, in average, around 10% of yield if you don't weight it by market cap. Something also interesting to, to point out is that there is a very strong momentum with staking, not only because we, we kicked off our, our staking campaign this month, but also because over a year, you also had already plus three points of market cap gained by proof-of-stake cryptocurrencies. And also because you have, you have a very innovative solutions entering the market. To, to illustrate my purpose, for instance, if dominance within the proof of stake market caps is very challenging. It went from 75% to only 55% over a year. You can think about Solana as a main challenger, but also uh, Tonecoin and so on. So what we see uh, as an ETP issuer is a very strong dynamic across many, many different blockchains, the underlying crypto assets. But also, I would say, an industry shift towards more and more proof-of-stake assets. So maybe now that we have mapped out a bit the market, we can maybe talk about, obviously, the two elephants in the room, meaning Ethereum and Solana. Absolutely. Of course, we don't have uh, time to dive deeper in all the different proof-of-stake networks, but I think it's worth looking at Ethereum and Solana, the two biggest ones. And just, yeah, grasp a little bit how the staking landscape looks with those two respective networks. Yeah, Max, do you want to dive in deeper a bit here? Yes, I would be thrilled to do. As Baptiste mentioned in the slide before, Ethereum's dominance is being challenged amongst the proof-of-stake crypto assets. But nevertheless, it still accounts for a massive 40% of the whole staking industry. And its market cap in terms of staked assets is $82 billion, which is huge. Interestingly enough, though, despite being the largest staked asset by market cap, the Ethereum staking ratio remains relatively low. 
it's only about 28% of ETH that is currently being staked. And potentially a reason for this is that Ethereum, as we know, is becoming more heavily adopted by institutions, which could explain the lower staking ratio. They may be less familiar with or less inclined towards staking compared to more crypto native users. Now, if we compare this to Solana, which is the second largest staked asset with $53 billion staked, it has a much higher staking ratio, which comes to about 68%. So it's significantly ahead of Ethereum. And as you can see, it's only behind a couple of other newer, leaner layer ones that have, and Celestia, of course. That being said, the explanation for this could be that Solana's user base, as we know, is more retail driven. These type of users might be more familiar with staking and other kind of crypto native features. I think that gives a good breakdown of the explanation towards why we see differences in staking ratios. Absolutely. Um, and maybe maybe here a question. Now we want to look at the APYs uh, and compare Ethereum to Solana. But I think what would be really interesting is also where does the yield actually coming from? How do we yeah, how do we come to this five percent and average staking yield that we've been talking about at the beginning? Yes, uh, of course, gladly. So for those of you who are unaware, the staking the total staking yield is like a pie that is made up of token issuance, but also transaction fees and MEV, which is the more crypto native way in which validators essentially order the order of transactions within a blockchain. And so these are the three kind of sources uh, from the staking yield. And so what we're seeing actually from Ethereum is that the staking yield has dropped by 2.8% over the last two years to around 3.29%. And so a reason for this in, it could be that we are starting to see more people staking on Ethereum in terms of in the last year, we have a 30% increase in people staking dollars staked on Ethereum. And an analogy for this is that as more people aim to take a portion of the pie, your slice of the pie gets smaller. So the more people are staking on Ethereum, the smaller each individual's yield will become. On top of this, what we're starting to see as well is that the staking yield portion from fees is actually decreasing as well, which you can see in the chart. And the reason for this is because we have started to see a, a rapid adoption of layer two solutions, uh, which obviously reduce the cost of transacting on Ethereum, and therefore the yield generated from these fees has started to decrease.